And you know it's Music Tuesday here on News with a Twist, and we've got a guy who's a multi-instrumentalist, mm -hmm. right? And singer, and one of New Orleans' best soul men. Yeah, but what most people don't know is that John Cleary's introduction to New Orleans music happened at a very early age in his native Kent, England. It's no question that John Cleary's been a soulful mainstay on the New Orleans music scene for over 20 years. Born to a music-playing family and hailing from a small farming community in Great Britain, we got a chance to catch up at his Bywater home, and he told us how he landed in our city. Well, I wanted to come to New Orleans because I grew up hearing stories about this place from my Uncle John, who had lived here, and I had various family members that been out to visit him, some of whom had stayed for a little while. And um, New Orleans was pop was important anyway in my family because my mum and dad were big fans of New Orleans music and all New Orleans jazz. John doesn't remember exactly when he first started to play, but his first instrument he took to wasn't the piano. I got my first guitar when I was about six, I suppose because my hands weren't big enough to play my dad's guitar and, he was, and I was playing it, but it was just a, it was a giant on me, but he knew I could see I was interested, so he got me a little guitar that was about this big. John Cleary's education in New Orleans music continued on that first trip here as he had the good fortune to hear both Earl King and the great James Booker on his first week in town. After a few years, he had to return to England but was very fortunate to land a guitar gig on a Dr. John tour in Great Britain. He's called New Orleans home ever since then and even today draws on our history to write songs. It's good to be able to delve back into the rich treasure trove that is the past history of New Orleans R&B or the music around the big wide world. As for songwriting, John talks of the various complex musical filters and personal experiences one uses to develop songs, but also the simplicity of everyone having the same tools to write. There's only, look, look how few notes, that's the, that's the amount of notes there are. That's all you're working with, that's just repeated over and over again, but that's it. John and his band, the Absolute Monster Gentlemen, have an upcoming tour of Japan and Hawaii, but according to him, there's nothing like playing right here at home. We just came back off a tour last Friday, and we had a great tour, great audiences, but there's nothing like playing here in New Orleans, just the way people, everyone dances here. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you play some dance music, everyone dances. There's a lot of other places you have to <laughs> gradually coax them out of their seats. <laughs> John is one busy cat. Mm -hmm. He's in New York tonight playing a tribute to Billy Preston. Mm. Then he's at the Maple Leaf this Saturday with band, the Absolute Monster Gentlemen, and then they're on a tour to Japan and Hawaii. Wow. Crazy. And you know, I was yeah. just thinking, when you sing, yeah. you can't tell if a person is from <laughs> England or Australia or the U.S. because somehow singing makes everything soulful. soulful. Oh, yeah. yeah.